Today I want to show you this really neat tool I've started using to manage the dependencies of my projects. It's called Dependabot, and it's basically a tool that automatically sends PRs to your projects uh, against the dependencies whenever they change. So I've been wanting to get it set up for Mirage, so let's just go ahead and work through that together. So the first thing we're going to do is come here to Dependabot and click Login. Now the first time you do this, if I open this up in an incognito window, you'll be asked to sign in using GitHub. So this is a really easy way to just log in. And once we're in, we can go ahead and choose which organization or account we want to manage. Now Mirage is under my username, so I'm going to come here and click Add an Account. Click Sam Salikoff. And I'm just going to come here and choose Mirage. So now that's selected and I can click install. I can go ahead and enter my GitHub password. And now I'm using Dependabot as Sam Selikoff. So I can click select repos to add. I'm going to select Mirage. And this language menu is going to be how Dependabot knows which dependencies to upgrade. So because we're using a JavaScript project and Mirage has you know, a package.json file right here, we're going to leave this as JavaScript. So we can go ahead and click Add Selected. And now we see Dependabot is watching our project. So to start, it's just going to go ahead and check right now for any outdated dependencies in our project. And that's what Bump Now means. It's just going to see if any of the dependency versions need to be bumped. Now usually this happens pretty fast, so if we come back to Mirage's project on GitHub and we click pull requests and we wait just a few minutes and refresh. We're going to see one new PR here and this is from Dependabot, has a dependencies label and this one is a security bump. So we're already seeing Dependabot working for us. This is bumping the package A to B from 2.03 to 2.12. So this is an interesting case. We can come here and look at the files changed. And we can see that this is actually just a change in the yarn.lock file. And if we open up Mirage and look at the package JSON and search for A to B, we're actually not going to see this anywhere in our top level dependencies. So this is something that's being installed by one of those dependencies that we have. But Dependabot is able to look at the installed version based on our lock file and see that it's out of date. So you can think of this like if someone were to clone Mirage fresh from GitHub without a yarn.lock file and install all those uh, dependencies just from package.json, this is the version of A to B that they would get. And so in this way, this is kind of an outdated version in our lock file in our project. And so Dependabot showing us this. Now there's some other cool stuff in this PR. Dependabot will automatically try to pull in relevant information for us based on things like the NPM advisory database and other sources like GitHub releases tabs to show us what has changed from different versions. And they even give us this handy link to all of the commits between the version that we have in our project and this new version that's the latest version. So this is pretty cool already, just kind of taking care of this menial work for us. And you can see that once this PR opened, you know, our test suite automatically started running. So basically at this point, I'm just going to wait until the tests pass. And once they do, as long as everything is green, we'll just be able to go ahead and merge this PR. Now I've just refreshed this and we see there's some other PRs coming in from Dependabot. So let's take a look at this uh, Ember jQuery one. So I believe jQuery is a top level um, dependency in our project. It might be a dev dependency. Yep, I think we use it for maybe some of our tests and maybe the, uh, the add-on doc site. And this is telling us that we need to bump from 0.52 to 0.6. And we can look at the release notes here. And this is really cool. We're seeing a ton of information for us right here. We don't have to go hunting and look up the project on GitHub and find it. Dependabot does a really good job of pulling this in from the release notes and it has a link for us right here. So we can just see that these are coming from the releases tab on GitHub. And that just makes it easy for us to say, oh, why is it going from 0.5.2 to 0.6? Well, the main reason that uh, that middle version is changing is because of Node 4 support. And again, we can kind of glance at what else has changed. It also will source in from the change log. And then again, we have a list of commits here 
which it's pulling based on the actual commits between versions. So all of this information, having this right here is really good. And if you watched my upgrade video from about a month or two ago, you know that I really like this whole process of kind of updating one dependency at a time. The, the least amount is changing between um, PRs here so that if you just change one dependency, you know, it's the easiest to find if, if a test breaks that you know what's happening instead of trying to upgrade a bunch of dependencies at once. So Dependabot really takes this idea to its logical conclusion and just submits PRs whenever a version of any of your dependencies change. So again, at this point, we can come down here and see that, that our tests have been kicked off. And once these are green, this will be ready to merge. Now in this case, it's important to note that if we were to merge this in, jQuery in our project would be going from 0.52 to 0.6, which technically is a breaking change because node 4 has been dropped. And that means that technically Mirage would need to bump its major assembly release to communicate to others that it also has dropped support for node 4. Now in this case, jQuery is a dev dependency of Mirage, so that might affect whether or not we need to actually bump that Semver major version. But the basic idea is, is we need to be aware of what it is we're merging in. Now there's some other really cool things about Dependabot. If we come here to one of the new PRs, down here there's a section that says Dependabot commands and options. And this lets us actually configure how Dependabot treats this dependency just by adding in a message right here. We can tell it things like to ignore a certain version or ignore this dependency. And if we pop over to Ember CLI Tailwind, this is the first project I, I set up Dependabot on, and we come and look at one of the closed PRs here. One of the first uh, PRs that it opened up was for Ember CLI. Now, as you know, in Ember, when we bump major versions of Ember CLI, there's usually some associated blueprints to run alongside it. That's why the tool Ember CLI Update is so great. And so in this case, I really didn't want to bump the version of Ember CLI just automatically from Dependabot. I wanted to wait and do this once I could run that Ember CLI Update command and make sure I get any changes to the generated files. So what I did was actually just come down here and again, using this command, we can say at Dependabot, ignore this dependency. And you'll see that I commented on this two days ago and Dependabot closed this PR and it says, okay, I won't notify you about Ember CLI again. So this is just a really cool way to interact with Dependabot and say, you know, for this dependency, we don't want you to do this. Everything else will be good, but I'm gonna take care of Ember CLI myself. Now, if we come back to Dependabot.com and the app here, we can see we have Mirage and it was last checked two minutes ago. We can click the settings link and we get some more options here in this UI. So if we don't want it to run every day, we can do it every week or every month. And there's some filters we, we can apply. Now, one section I wanna point out right here is this automatic PR merging. So if we come back to Mirage and we take a look at this PR, bumping Ember CLI ESLint from 423 to 510, you can see that we have two files have actually changed, the yarn.lock file and the package.json file. So Dependabot saw that the latest version of Ember CLI ESLint was 5.1.0, so it went ahead and changed our package.json. And of course, it then runs yarn install, which changes our yarn.lock file. But if we go back to our pull request for some of these you know, smaller security updates, you'll be able to see that the only file that's changing is the yarn.lock files. So again, just to explain what's happening here, handlebars is going from 4011 to 410. And you can think of this as a regeneration of our lock file. Whereas if we come back to Ember CLI ES Lint, this is actually an outdated version that's changed enough that our original constraints in our package JSON no longer will provide the latest version. So Dependabot's saying, you actually need to change your package.json as well. So this is a bigger change in the sense that we're really changing the version that we are declaring our project works with in kind of a bigger sense. So that's why we have these two lines changing in both of these files right here. And again, there's kind of more implications here. Since we're bumping Ember ESLint from 4.2 to 5.1, we would want to look at the release notes and if there's a breaking change that affects our users that might mean that we need to also 
increment the major Semver version of our project to indicate to our users that there's a breaking change. All that to say that typically when we're just bumping small versions, minor versions, or patch versions here, and the only thing that's changing is the lock file, you know, our package.json is not changing. So this is the version that someone would get if they were to install fresh from our package.json, ignoring the lock file in Mirage. And these are usually safe to merge if your test suite passes. You usually don't have to worry about communicating any breaking changes to your users. If your test passed, then you know your project still works. So a cool thing you can do with Dependabot over here is to say, we can automatically merge certain PRs. And we can just choose to automatically merge in range updates, both for runtime dependencies and development dependencies of our project. So if we choose in range updates, and we just update those settings, then we're going to see a lot of these kind of security bumps and just minor and patch version bumps that don't affect our package JSON, they're going to start getting automatically merged. And so what Dependabot is going to do now is once some of these start turning green, when our test suite passes, it's just going to go ahead and merge those in automatically. So that's just going to help clean up a lot of this noise and just automate a lot of this maintenance work. That's not really that fun as part of, a, of a, being an add-on maintainer. Now, one thing I will point out about all this is as you can see, each one of these PRs are waiting for Mirage's test suite to pass. And once the test suite passes, I'm reasonably uh, confident that I can go ahead and merge these PRs. And the only reason I'm confident is because I'm confident in Mirage's test suite. This also applies when people make changes to Mirage and submit their own PRs. The test suite is the best way, is the only way I know that these changes are not gonna break Mirage for my users. So kind of a prerequisite to even using a tool like Dependabot is if your project has a good test suite to begin with. It really needs a comprehensive test suite that is effectively saying, if my test suite passes, I know my project works, and therefore that enables tools like this to even work. So if your project doesn't have a good test suite, you're not really gonna be able to use this tool, but you kind of have a bigger problem because even if you're making changes to your dependency versions yourself, the only real way you know if a new version of a dependency works with your project is to use tests. There's truly no other way because a dependency could bump a patch version from 1.0.0 to 1.0.1 and something could have changed that completely breaks your library. So, you know, Semver is just a convention. The only true way to know if your project works with a particular version of a dependency, especially if it's changing, is to run a test suite. So a good test suite is an absolute prerequisite for using this tool and really just knowing if your project works as you change versions of dependencies. Now, one last thing I want to show you here is a, a relatively new feature that's been added to Dependabot, which is, by the way, free for open source projects, which is why it works so great for you know, open source add-ons like Mirage. And that is a config file. So right now we have kind of this UI on app.dependabot.com to configure our project and we can change these settings and update them. And it's really nice to have this and you know to use the comments and the PR like we talked about earlier to just change certain rules about how Dependabot works. But just like Travis and other tools, Dependabot can be configured using a config file. So if we come back here to Ember CLI Tailwind, I actually started playing around with this and you can see this .dependabot folder with a config.yaml file. And this is basically going to contain all of the information that we set up Dependabot with for Mirage. So it's a JavaScript project. The root directory is the main directory to watch and we want to update every day. And I was also able to set that option of auto merged updates and say every dependency type, both dev dependencies and dependencies, go ahead and automatically merge those updates if they're in range. So again, that's if the package JSON hasn't changed. And then finally, we want to ignore Ember CLI so that we can take care of that ourselves. So you can imagine this, this might be what a lot of these setups use in the future because just like you know the Travis file that comes with new add-ons and that you're able to configure to run your test suites, this is much more portable. I can now just copy this and put this in new projects and add-ons that I work on and Dependabot's gonna automatically have my back here. So that's kind of how you use Dependabot for an open source library, but it actually also works for applications. So you can set this up and wire it up to look at your actual application and send PRs to your private apps 
um, kind of as you go. And that way your upgrade process is a lot simpler because by the time you get around to upgrading Ember CLI, hopefully a lot of those third-party dependencies that you've added to your project are already ready to go. And again, if you watch that upgrade video, it just makes things a lot easier. So I haven't done that yet, but it's gonna be something I try very soon. Uh, Dependabot is a really cool tool. You know, the, the developer on it is really responsive on Twitter. Again, it's free for open source projects. So I hope you found that helpful and I definitely recommend checking it out.